United States of America. Oh, what a country. Very powerful. I can see his spirit. It's very strong. Jaya Shambha Mahadeva Om Shambha Shiva Shambha If this is the last chuckle that you hear from me, just know I went laughing. <laughs>
That's why I said I hope to see him again someday. Look at the cloud, oh my god, it's blue. They moved away. Yeah. Huh? Oh. Oh, Justin, don't put me through the gravel, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Pushing it away. Well, some rider. See all these fancy fairings yeah, they yeah, put. Yeah. It's taking all the wind, you know. Because I could see you at like yeah. 75 degrees. I'm telling you, it's going no, away. It was very scary to see. First time I'm seeing a bike which is leaning but still going yeah. straight. <laughs> the pocket little close enough, everything all service. Yep. That was Jay, huh? He made it. That is Jay. But he's coming to the other RV. So he's coming. Now we are here at Mato Tipila, this uh, fantastic formation of rock. A lacolithic intrusion, meaning it formed underground from the molten rock and became solid. Over a few million years, the surrounding sedimentary rock eroded away to display the tall core within. It is made up mostly of hexagonal columns. Visually, it's a sight to see. It was a real eye-opener for me, in many ways the key to understand Native American spirituality, the source of it, what empowered them to know things for which there seems to be no other basis. But here stands Mato Tipila as a powerful presence of Vishuddhi. Which unfortunately today people are calling it as Devil's Rock. In the shadow of the Devil's Tower, I meet a little devil right here. Yeah. Ah, uh, American gringo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks so much Thank for you. coming. Wonderful. <laughs> no, the, no, no, it's unreal. You guys want to walk up there now? This is like about 10 minutes up and 10 minutes back. And then we're going to be looking at the other side and the sun be right on the rock. You can drive this? Yeah. I mean, but be careful with your motorcycle because it's, it's gravel road for like a half a mile. This is where to come at night, too. I have no scholarship about these Native American tribes, what they did. But feeling this Matotipila 
I'm quite sure many of them sat in one place, gazed at the land, uttered the needed sounds, and felt the lands that they've not been to. It is significant that being around Matu Tipila, these tribes, the plains tribes acquired a certain possibility and there is so much talk about handling the spirits, how to deal with the spirits, what to do beyond death. It almost sounds very parallel to the yogi culture in this dimension because the power to handle the dead is only with those who have an active Vishuddhi. Well, the greatest example or the greatest manifestation of Vishuddhi, I cannot think of anybody other than Shiva himself, the Adiyogi. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of United Dreams of America. I am your host Aditi and today we have a very, very, very special guest with us. So we have to go to Big Horn, all right? We have to go there in daytime. That means... Uh, it's four hours from here. Four hours. And he is currently in the United States for his 10,000 mile bike tour named of Motorcycles and Mystic. And we leave at one o'clock? As, as soon as we finish the shoot. He is none other than Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudevji. Sadhguruji, welcome to Radio Mirchi USA. How are you? Namaskaram, Aditi. Tell us a little bit about this journey. The one important thing is you cannot talk about uh, United States of America without talking about the Indian nations of the past. And most people do not know there are over 300, there were over 300 nations. They had their own education system, they had their own spiritual process, higher education in some of the uh, tribes. And men and women were equally uh, participating in every aspect of life. And um, a whole lot of uh, tribes were uh, matriarchal. That means uh, the lineage was through women. These are all thing things we are talking about like they're modern ideas today. Women's liberation, this, that. I'm saying people have lived this way for thousands of years. I think it's best to revive those cultures, at least make people conscious of that. It is with that intent because it is a oral culture, nothing is written down, there is no real archaeological sites at, as you would see in other parts of the world because they lived a simple, off-the-land kind of life. Always uh, they said whatever the truth about them is blowing in the wind, so I thought it's best I ride a motorcycle and feel the wind, not miss the wind <laughs> Medicine wheel, big horn. What's your horn like, huh? Palm? Both are like at a different frequency, it's equally loud. United States of America, oh what a country. When I say United States, those of you who plan to visit the country, don't just waste your time in New York or uh, Florida or Los Angeles or worse in Las Vegas. 
you need to come to Wyoming, Idaho, South Dakota, and Montana. Whoa, what terrain, unbelievable. bending down and riding the wind gusting at uh, probably 35 miles which is making the motorcycle a bit uh, unsteady wanting to move into the other lane <laughs> wind gusts at 40 miles per hour they're warning us <laughs> if this is the last chuckle that you hear from me just know I went laughing <laughs> A lot of deer hits in the night. I think in the last hundred miles, I must have seen at least 50 deer smashed up. At least 50, I would say. Our micro road is best for the motorcycles. Boom. The mountain is a motorcyclist's dream. It's been fantastic bro, riding up. Let's go. Medicine wheel. A large wheel of over 300 feet diameter, I think, with 28 spokes, probably functioning both as a calendar and as a sacred guide to various auspicious events for the Native American people. Here we are at the Little Big Horn Battlefield. Little Big Horn Battle is a historic battle in the making of United States. And also in taming the Plains Indians, this was one significant battle. But this battle turned in favor of the Native Americans. 
a tactical mistake that General Custer made and he went into the attack. There were 1800 warriors and Custer had 225 cavalrymen. Well, it led to a, a complete wipeout that all the 225 soldiers died, including Custer. And uh, this was a serious defeat and it was a kind of a… like a pushback against the uh, United States. But here lies the soldiers, uh, not all of them from that battle, there are also others, but 225 are from that battle. Soldiers who lay down their lives for what they believe is the right thing and what they believe is valuable to them. And thousands of uh, Native American warriors who have no markers like this, lie on these plains, their bones have washed these fields. And they died believing what they were doing there is the right thing. They fought, lived and died what was precious to them. I shall not see you, son, go down behind the mountains tonight. I'm going home today, not the way we came, but in spirit, home to my people, bloody knife, Hari Kara. Hmm? That in dispassion towards their own lives. Unfortunately, this has been the history of humanity, that human beings of different identifications of tribes, nations, communities, religions and races have fought endlessly. These are not old men who should die anyway, to three years of age. These are young men who should have lived but died. Like this, there are thousands of Native American graves who have died on this land. These graves are not in celebration, but in reminder, this is not the way to conduct the world. Famous river and famous crossing. This is Medicine Tail Coolie Crossing. Crossing of the Ludwig Horn River. This is where Custer came across, and they said Custer got killed right here across the river. The Native American story, the Lakota story. Brave people. Curtis. Curtis. Curtis Little Bird. Real bird. Real bird. Real bird. Yeah. Name Sheridan. Sheridan? Yeah. We have a long way to come. Native Americans mm -hmm. to heal ourselves from the… This is the time, this generation, if you raise them well, it's important to maintain your identity but at the same time to be a part of the mainstream because otherwise you get left out. You know, it's important that you have both economic power, education, foothold in the society but not losing your identity. That is where, uh, you know, the strength of building a future is. It's important that your youth get educated, but don't forget, there must be educa regular education, but there must be your own traditional education along with that, that's important. Thank you. Carry that message for future generations. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us here. Mm -hmm. i put these over your yeah. shoulders. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.
Yes, we are one. We are one. Can I ask you to look at your palms once? You want to look? Yeah. <laughs> you will be surprised. <laughs> I started uh, my life. I grew up in a uh, spiritual way with my family. We were very spiritual people. I started learning since I was a young boy. I started growing into this way. I had an advantage over other people. They didn't have the spirituality like, like my family did. By the time I reached 35 years old, I was up on the mountain, pierced to a tree for four days. No food, no water, nobody around me. I started receiving gifts spiritually. That a lot of things changed for me at that point in my life. From then on, I started growing. Each year, every year, as I'm moving forward, the, the abilities that I've gained through our ceremonies are getting stronger, stronger, stronger. And it's, uh, it's because of my commitment in my heart, in my belief in the Creator, that my calling is to help my people. That's what it's about. That's all there is. All of us should do whatever we can yeah. do. What we cannot do, we cannot do. We can't fix the past, we can fix the future. And I've been doing that for the last 21 years now. Keep serving the people, it's very yeah. important. Your yeah. people need it, Apsala. Yeah. It's great to be here. On yeah. The Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate your visit. Yogeshwara Kala Kala Yogeshwara Kala Kala 